without anamorphic and with autofocus. This is kind of game changing for me. Guys, after years and years and years with being obsessed with anamorphic and trying to cheat the look without shooting with actual anamorphics because too expensive, you can't get autofocus with them, having a de-stretching camera could be an issue. I need to break down what this is. This just looks like a regular lens maybe, but there's a few things that I did to this to really hack it. So uh, let's start breaking it down. Now, the first thing I wanna address is in that little film thing I put together, I shot that like in 15 minutes and then I edited it in like 10 minutes. I did use a flare filter on there. I'm usually not a fan of flare filters, but I just threw it on there just, you know, cause I know some of you guys might like it and I know a bunch of you guys might hate it. Personally, I, I rather not use them, but I just thought it was fun. This is the Sigma 35 millimeter F 1.4. This is EF mount that is important because the what we're gonna get into later, but even more importantly, there's something on the back of this lens here and this is super cheap and it's just a sticker so you can take it on and off. So let's talk about this before we get into the cream of the crop of this whole video. So these little filters back here are made by Vid Atlantic. The trick to filters like this is you have to have a fast lens. Once you go down to F2.8, F4, it starts vignetting. Now this is gonna give you that oval bokeh. Literally just a little vinyl sticker so you could take it on and off. When you buy the pack of it, it comes with different size options. So depending on what lens you have, you can just audition the filters on there and see which one will clear. If you do ones that have too tight of an oval filter, you'll get vignetting. If you do ones that are too wide of an oval filter, it won't really give you that effect. So this one right here uh, goes perfectly with this 35 millimeter 1.4. So obviously this isn't a perfect solution, but this is like one of the best solutions you can get. There's a big difference between just a filter like this and an actual anamorphic lens. The anamorphic lens, I'm shooting on right now, uh, this lens isn't even released yet, so I don't know if I'm allowed to talk about it much, but it's a 45 millimeter. So in reality, we're getting a 45 millimeter compression, but on the D stretch, it's 1.5X. And so it's getting like, maybe like 30 millimeters wide. So I'm able to get closer while still getting a wide shot. This is just gonna be 35 millimeter. So it's gonna crop in right here and still gonna be this tight. So that's the big difference. But you'll see, we'll get the opal bokeh. But that's not enough. That still doesn't give you that full on anamorphic look. That's where this comes in. This is the module eight L3 tuner. No one's talking about this. Everyone's talking about the L1 and the L2. The L3 was the one that really got me excited because it creates astigmatism. I've been using this for all my talking head stuff. A lot of my B-roll, I'll shoot on actual anamorphics, but for talking head, it's kind of hard to do manual focus because I'm always moving in and out. I have ADHD, I'm just like, I, I fidget a lot. And so with this setup, I get to keep autofocus. Now, let's go over what this tuner does. Um, again, everyone's talking about the L1 and the L2 because the L1 kind of gives you like a diffusion look. The L2 gives you a Canon, some spherical lens that you, I literally have zero interest in because I'm just anamorphic obsessed. That's why I'm doing this video. This creates astigmatism. What is astigmatism? I still don't exactly know. <laughs> uh, Mike, who runs module eight, uh, I actually had him come over and he talked about it. So, so let's just hear from the guy who's running all this, what uh, astigmatism is. Our L3 is our retroscope. It's basically doing a little halation in the, in the in the center. And then there's just a lot of astigmatism that rolls in from about S35 to full frame. And uh, it can give some really funky depth of field effects some really funky bokeh effects. For everybody who loves the new Batman movie, if you want more of that Batman look where the edges have all that distortion and there's just a bunch of funkiness and it gives more depth and texture to the image, the L3, am I wrong? So if you have a, an actor who's off camera, my cam is here and I'm at T24, go from zero, all right, dial it all the way up to 10, you can see how he lost, we lost focus on him. And we lost focus him on a way, I'm gonna go all the way to 10. We lost focus on a way that we really can't get back. 
I mean, it's like, it's never really perfectly sharp again. It actually takes the bokeh and, and takes up, you know, if the bokeh is kind of cat eye from your lens, yeah. it makes it a little more yeah. elliptical. And then you get, you know, it gives you the swirly bokeh and then the swirly bokeh sign of almost pulls into yeah. the center of the frame. It's now I'm gonna wrap back pretty quick. So watch those edges come back in the focus. So now that painting's in focus, I'm gonna kind of go fast, two, four, six, eight, ten, so you can see you can see the edge roll off. It's just kind of like the same type of astigmatism you'd find in a in an old anamorphic lens. Call it, that's why we call it retroscope because our designer, Ian Neal, he basically said I'm gonna put in the amount of astigmatism you'd find in a vintage anamorphic lens. So with a lot of anamorphics, they have stigmatism. So on the edges, you see as we go into the edge the sharpness kind of falls off. There's some distortion. So originally I was just using this adapter, but sometimes this adapter can look very subtle depending on what your environment is and what your edges look like. If you're sharing a full frame or super 35, sometimes to the naked eye, they might not see it, but other people might be like, this looks a little bit different. I think the times that I'll probably be using this a lot besides the other things I already spoke about with like talking head segments and like nine by 16 deliverables, more when I'm shooting actual full on anamorphic projects. And for some reason, if I need a faster lens or if I need an autofocus, or maybe if I even need a macro shot and I don't have diopters with me, something like this is gonna be able to step in and kind of match that look. And I think to most people, they're not gonna be able to tell that the look is off. Obviously to professionals, some of us might be able to call it out, but I will say that the autofocus gets thrown off by this because obviously it's it's making the focus plane all funky and it's just kind of throwing the edges and, and everything a little bit off. And so the autofocus gets a little bit confused. Sometimes I have to shift the autofocus on and off on the lens. So um, I think it's a combination of this just being an old lens being an EF, being adapted, uh, plus the effect that this uh, tuner does. Also, I'll include links in the description to all this stuff. If you guys end up building your own versions of this setup, but with different lenses and combinations, feel free to DM me on Instagram, just so uh, you know we communicate and kind of help each other out on trying to build the look up and seeing what lenses work good, what lenses don't work well. But yeah, I guess that's it. Peace.